Hi again, this is Ryan, um, week three blog. So this week was Earth Week and what we decided we were going to do originally was an earthquake scene. Um, so we had the footage that we did in week one um, of Greenwich um, and we were going to use that footage to basically destroy it um, in After Effects and create an earthquake. But um, Chris and Benna were thinking about the interaction side of it and we weren't too sure about how it was going to work, how it was going to actually be interacted with. Um, there's a few ideas that we had at the start but it was kind of a case of what was going to happen in, in the actual installation. Um, and we had a chat, we, I think all of us were had a chat on Skype um, about it and we decided that Bernard basically had some vibration sensors and we thought, well, if we're creating an earthquake scene it would be quite interesting if someone could maybe run on a pad or um, stamp their feet on, on something to create uh, a sense of earthquake in the footage. Um, so with that in mind we scrapped the idea for doing the, the Greenwich earthquake scene and what we decided to do was uh, myself and Danny went over to uni and we decided we could make an earthquake scene there. We went over on Thursday about 2 o'clock um, and it was quite busy at uni so doing any work in the corridors was quite a challenge because there was obviously people walking around um, you know it's a very busy time of year. Um, so we got into the gallery and we did some bits in there with the ladder falling over and some wood um, and a table shaking and some sort of debris falling down um, and then what we decided to do was we'd go back on Friday, go back there about 7 o'clock, which we did. Um, much more quieter, much less people going around. Um, and we managed to do some work in the corridors. Um, and we, we did a basically a first person perspective scenario. So your person is running through the corridors, um, they come out double doors, they go down the stairs and then they go out for another set of doors. Um, and down the corridor and we were switching lights on and off and trying to create as much of an earthquake sense that we could with what we had around us so there was a few bits um, of like stacked wood that we shook and got some footage of that as well um, just so we could have enough things to, to work with in After Effects so after we finished um, filming and I've put some footage up of that so if you want to have a look you can see our um, evening of filming. So after we did the corridor scenes at uni we decided to go to Piccadilly and we could do a scene down there which would give us a view of what's happening in the rest of London which would be quite interesting for the footage. Um, so we went to Piccadilly about nine, half nine, something like that. Um, it was still quite bright out at that time because obviously it's coming up to summer now so it's wait around for a while. But I think by about 10 o'clock the lights were really nice, um, the background was really dark, the sky was really dark so we set up the shot there. Now the only problem with filming in Piccadilly is that it's very busy and people don't look like they're in a panic. So what we decided to do was we took about 30 pictures on a long exposure which gives a real nice sense of movement and what we decided we would do in After Effects is have the top half of the footage as playing the, the, the video that we recorded and the bottom half would be um, blending in and out with opacity of the different images to create a sense of movement, uh, create a sense of fast movement more importantly. So myself and Danny met up and we worked on the, the footage, um, Danny did a few bits um, on the gallery footage and we found um, a really good package called Action Essentials which has loads of keyed footage of debris falling, sparks, all kinds of action um, bits to create a, a nice realistic earthquake. So we used a lot of that and also um, some online support for creating shake. Um, in terms of the shake there's a kind of we're not sure yet ultimately whether we're going to use the shake from the After Effects footage or whether we're going to put it in in the actual interaction side of it because that is something that can be done with the sensors. We can basically link the 
person's actions to creating that shake in the, in the footage as well as sound, which ultimately would be more interesting. But we'll see what, what works best. We'll get, we've got a few weeks left before we actually do the installation, so we'll try it out and see what works. Um, Chris this week has found a fantastic application, um, Quartz Composer, um, which is using basically to explore different ways of interacting. And what Benner and Chris have managed to do is get this Quartz Composer working with pure data so we can create some fantastic interaction using the two pieces of software. So that's the week three blog. I've put up some footage of us filming the earthquake scenario. So if you're interested in that, have a look.